Almost every religion talks about the existence of the underworld where one's soul goes after death, particularly if they lived a sinful life. This realm is commonly described as lying beneath the earth's surface, with earth being the domain of the living, while the underworld serves as the realm of the deceased. So the underworld, by definition, is a realm of terror in most mythologies and serves as the dwelling place for countless mythological monsters. In Greek mythology as well, the underworld remained a place of terror but also holds significant importance as one of the fundamental realms of existence. As for the legends, this haunting yet fascinating realm is ruled by Hades who is the king of the underworld. However, it is important to clarify that although Hades rules over the underworld, he is not regarded as the god of the dead but rather as the ruler of the underworld. The deity associated with death itself is Thanatos, whose responsibility is to separate the human soul from its physical body after their passing. Due to his association with the underworld, Hades is one of the most feared deities in the Greek pantheon. His name even became synonymous with the underworld, leading the ancient Greeks to refrain from speaking his name aloud as they believed it would bring about their own death. While Hades oversaw the judgment and punishment of the wicked in the afterlife, he typically did not serve as one of the judges in the underworld nor did he personally inflict torment upon most of the guilty. He is described as a stern and unyielding figure, so Hades remained unaffected by prayers or offerings, much like death itself. Hades is the fourth child born to the titan gods Cronus and Rhea and is also the eldest among their three sons. According to the myths, Cronus, fearing a prophecy that he would be overthrown by one of his own children, devoured all his offsprings. However, Rhea managed to hide her younger son Zeus and protected him from this fate. When Zeus came of age, he orchestrated the release of his siblings by forcing Cronus to disgorg them. Hades, Zeus and Poseidon, the three sons of Cronus, fulfilled the prophecy by waging war against their father and successfully dethroning him. This resulted in the world being divided into three realms, the sky, the ocean and the underworld, with each brother ruling over one. Hades specifically assumed dominion over the underworld and became the king of the dead. According to Homer's epic poem Iliad, Hades and his two brothers, Poseidon and Zeus, decided their realms by drawing lots. Zeus received the sky, Poseidon received the sea, and Hades received the underworld. Although Hades typically does not directly involve himself in most events related to human souls, it is believed he has a role in designing the punishments for the most wicked individuals who are condemned to Tartarus. Within the depths of the Tartarus, these souls are imprisoned and subjected to torment according to the designs crafted by Hades. The origin of Hades' name remains uncertain, yet it is commonly interpreted as meaning the Unseen One. This understanding reflects the realm of the underworld over which Hades presides as well as the hidden nature of death and the afterlife. While the exact etymology of his name remains elusive, the concept of Hades as the Unseen Ruler aligns with his role and the enigmatic nature of his domain. Due to the Greeks' fear of speaking his name, Hades was commonly referred to as the Infernal Zeus, Zeus of the Underworld, or by alternative names like Pluton or Plutos. There is a debate among scholars regarding the Roman counterpart of Hades, with some believing it to be Pluto. However, others argue that Pluto represents a distinctly different deity, or at the very least, a different aspect of Hades. I explored this topic in a previous episode, so if you are interested in learning more, I encourage you to take a look at it. Hades is commonly depicted holding a biden, a two-pronged instrument resembling a pitchfork, while wearing his iconic helmet of invisibility. Standing by his side is Cerberus, the formidable three-headed guard dog of the underworld. The Biden and the helmet are considered Hades' most powerful possessions, symbolizing his authority. Cerberus, on the other hand, serves as a faithful watchdog and companion of Hades. 
the Helmet of Invisibility, also known as the Helmet of Hades, possesses the remarkable ability to make its wearer invisible even to other gods. During the war between Cronus and his three sons, the Cyclopes forged three divine weapons for the young gods to use in battle. Zeus received the lightning bolt, Poseidon received the trident, and Hades was given the Helmet of Invisibility. These artifacts played crucial roles in this war. Hades display a particular concern for Cerberus. This is clearly seen in the story of the Greek hero Heracles and his twelve labors. Among these labors, the twelfth and the final task was to capture Cerberus and bring it to the land of the living. With considerable difficulty, following the guidance of Hermes and Athena, Heracles ventured into the underworld to find Hades. There he confronted the god and asked for permission to take Cerberus with him to the surface. Admiring Heracles' courage for entering the underworld and making such a request, Hades agreed but on one condition. Heracles must subdue the beast without using weapons and must ensure Cerberus' return to the underworld unharmed. This tale highlights Hades' particular concern for the well-being of Cerberus. Cerberus has the important task of guarding the gates of the underworld, illustrating the immense trust Hades plays on this hound. Cerberus ensures that no living being enters the realm of the dead and no departed soul escape the underworld. According to the beliefs, Hades possesses the ability to make everyone fall for his enchantments, which is why no one ever leaves the underworld. He is described as all-seeing, observing all things that occur. With supreme authority over the underworld, Hades wields the power to make the entire realm tremble with just his voice. As the ruler of the underworld, his domain lies beneath the earth's surface, granting him access and control to all the precious stones and metals buried within the earth. His alternative name Pluton is generally said to have the meaning the rich one. His palace is described as a mesmerizing creation fashioned from unparalleled riches, surpassing even those found in Olympus. It is believed that only those chosen by Hades can find and enter his palace, while others may spend a lifetime searching in vain. To journey within the underworld and travel between realms, Hades was said to employ a chariot drawn by four black horses. These horses were depicted with skeletal features, fiery eyes, and breath. Their names were Ophnius, Ethan, Nyctus, and Elaster. The chariot itself was a magnificent creation, crafted from gold and decorated with symbols and patterns linked to the realm of the dead. Another significant possession of Hades is the Key of Hades. Legend has it that Hades used this key to lock the gates of the underworld securely, ensuring that evil forces do not escape from the realm of the dead and create disorder upon the realm of the living. The key of Hades stands as a powerful symbol of authority and the guardianship he maintains over the boundaries between the two worlds. Persephone, the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, is considered as the wife of Hades. The abduction of Persephone by Hades is one of the most prominent myths associated with Hades. Despite his stern character, Hades is described as a gentle lover. Even though Persephone did not submit to Hades and he abducted her, Hades eventually made her fall in love with him. Helios, who is the god of the sun, even consoles Demeter on seeing her grieved after Persephone's abduction that Hades was not an unworthy groom or son-in-law. Hades is also romantically linked to two names, Zeus and Minter, in various legends. Many of these stories indicate that Hades had relationships with them before taking Persephone as his consort. In the legend surrounding Zeus, she is described as the most beautiful of the nymphs and the daughter of all seniors. Hades fell in love with her on seeing her beauty and abducted her to the underworld. Over time, Zeus fell in love with Hades and they shared a joyful life together in the underworld. When Luz reached the end of her mortal life, Hades transformed her into a white poplar tree and placed it in the Elysian Fields, which is a realm of eternal bliss located within the underworld. On the other hand, the relationship between Hades and Minte is more complicated 
than the one he had with Luz. Minta is described as Hades' mistress in various versions of the myth. One account suggests that Hades kept Minta as his mistress before marrying Persephone, but later set her aside. Minta boasted her beauty, claiming that Hades would return to her soon, which angered Demeter as the nymph offended her daughter. In her anger, Demeter trampled Minta and transformed her into the plant mint. In another version, it was Persephone who grew jealous of Minta due to Hades showing affection towards her. Persephone trampled Minte, turning her into a garden mint. Another variation of the tale indicates that Hades himself turned Minte into mint after Persephone tore her into pieces after realizing her affair with Hades. As for the legends, only a few has ventured into the underworld and has managed to safely return to the world of the living. Beside Heracles, notable individuals who ventured to the underworld were Odysseus, Aeneas, Orpheus, Theseus, and Pirithus, and Psyche. None of them were pleased with what they witnessed in the realm of the dead. Hades either punished them for their intentions or presented them with challenging tests to prove their worthiness for his attention. Hades, as the god of the dead, was a fearsome figure to those still living. Greeks were cautious about uttering his name, hesitated to swear oaths in his presence, and averted their faces during sacrifices. But they recognized Hades was not an inherently malevolent deity, but rather a just and stern ruler. When people approached him in time of need, he won't dismiss them outright. Instead, he would assign them tasks to demonstrate their worthiness of his attention. What do you think of this story? Let me know your thoughts and anything I might have missed. If you enjoyed this video, please consider to leave a like as it helps promote the video and helps the channel to grow. As always, thank you so much for all your love and support. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you again with another story to tell.